Rhinitis is an inflammation of the mucous membranes of the nose and is characterized by sneezing, itchy nose, itchy eyes, watery rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, and sometimes non-productive cough. An attack may be precipitated by inhalation of the allergen, such as dust, pollen, or animal dander. The foreign material interacts with the mast cells coated with IgE generated in response to previous allergen exposure. The mast cells release mediators such as histamine, leukotrienes, and chemotactic factors that promote bronchial spasm and mucosal thickening from edema and cellular infiltration. Antihistamines and or intranasal corticosteroids are preferred therapies for allergic rhinitis. Antihistamines are useful for management of symptoms of allergic rhinitis caused by histamine release, sneezing, watery rhinorrhea, itchy eyes, itchy nose. However, they are more effective for prevention of symptoms rather than treatments once symptoms have begun. Ophthalmic and nasal antihistamine delivery devices are available for more targeted tissue delivery. First generation antihistamines such as dipenhydramine and chlorpeniramine are usually not preferred due to adverse effects such as sedation, performance impairment, and other anticholinergic effects. The second generation antihistamines, for example, fexofenadine, loratadine, desloratadine, cetirizine, and intranasal azelastine are generally better tolerated. Combinations of antihistamines with decongestants are effective when congestion is feature of rhinitis. Intranasal corticosteroids such as biclometazone, budesonide, fluticazone, cyclozonide, momentazone, triamcinolone are the most effective medications for treatment of allergic rhinitis. They improve sneezing, itching, rhinorrhea, and nasal congestion. Systemic absorption is minimal, and side effects of intranasal corticosteroid treatments are localized. These include nasal irritation, nosebleed, sore throat, and rarely candidiasis. To avoid systemic absorption, patients should be instructed not to inhale deeply while administering these drugs because the target tissue is the nose, not the lungs or the throat. For patients with chronic rhinitis improvement may not be seen until 1 to 2 weeks after starting therapy. Short-acting alpha-adrenergic agonists Nasal decongestants Penilaprine constrict dilated arterioles in the nasal mucosa and reduce airway resistance. A longer-acting oxymetazoline is also available. When administered as an aerosol, these drugs have rapid onset of action and show few systemic effects. Unfortunately, the alpha-adrenergic agonist intranasal formulations should not be used longer than 3 days due to risk rebound nasal congestion. Rhinitis medicamentosa. For this reason, the alpha-adrenergic agonists have no place in long-term treatment of allergic rhinitis. As with intranasal formulations, regular use of oral alpha-adrenergic agonists alone or in combination with antihistamines is not recommended. Other agents. Intranasal chromoline may be used in allergic rhinitis, particularly when administered before contact with an allergen. To optimize the therapeutic effect, should, dosing should begin at least 1 to 2 weeks prior to allergen exposure. A non-prescription over-the-counter nasal formulation of chromoline is available, also potential inferior to other treatments. Some leukotriene antagonists are effective for allergic rhinitis as monotherapy or in combination with other agents. They may be reasonable option in patients with also have asthma. An intranasal formulation of ipratropium is available to treat rhinorrhea associated with allergic rhinitis or the common cold. It does not relieve sneezing or nasal congestion.